Did you know that you can make your own seedling fertilizer at home using plants and herbs? Hey guys, it's Bree here at Blossom and Branch Farm. Today it is January 10th and we have a bunch of seedlings going here in the greenhouse. Today I'm going to be showing you how I make my homemade seedling fertilizer. So this came about because I got kind of tired of buying seedling fertilizer. Um, usually what I was using was fish emulsion and I just felt like uh, the shipping of fish emulsion because it's a heavy liquid container uh, was problematic and then I also had some concerns on the plastic that they use to uh, contain the fish fertilizer. Now I'm not like a big conspiracy theorist but I do have a lot of concerns about PFAS in our gardens, uh, the forever chemicals and my concerns are that a lot of those plastic containers, the HDPEs, have been what's called fluorinated. And fluorinated just means that they've been kind of reinforced to be more uh, weather tolerant and also to hold up better to liquids. So a lot of herbicides and pesticides are packaged in these fluorinated HDPE packaging. And those they have found are leaching PFAS into the liquid is inside. So my concern started to be that this fish emulsion is being contaminated with PFAS because it's being stored in plastic. So what I wanted to do was figure out a way that I could make seedling fertilizer at home. Um, and so I kind of started this with things that I had around my garden and here at the farm. So if you're wondering, like, why do you include this and not this or this and that? because I tried to use stuff that I had, okay? I didn't want to have to buy a bunch of stuff because that defeats the purpose. So without further ado, let's talk about the things that I put in my home seedling fertilizer. I have a pot here. This is boiling water. Well, it's, it was boiling. I brought it out to the greenhouse now. And I have uh, 20 cups of water in here, or 1.25 gallons, if you're doing the math at home. <laughs> and this recipe is pretty flexible. You could probably get away with kind of going plus or minus on any of these ingredients. This is just how much I do. So 20 cups of boiling water, or 1.25 gallons. And to that, I'm going to add three things. I'm going to add stinging nettle. So this is dried stinging nettle. Obviously it's January, I don't have fresh stinging nettle. Um, this is dried stinging nettle. And stinging nettle has a little bit of nitrogen in it. Um, at least theoretically, <laughs> it provides a little bit of a nitrogen source for the plants. We are also using chamomile. Uh, this is chamomile that we grew here at the farm and chamomile actually has some antibacterial and antifungal properties. So that's why we're using the chamomile in here. And then the third thing that I'm putting in is cinnamon sticks. Cinnamon is also an antifungal, so good for things like algae reduction. Um, we are using the stick version and we're gonna steep it in our hot water. And the last thing I'm going to put in, you do not have to do this if you don't want to, <laughs> is a lovely sheep poop. So this is a contribution to our garden from our sheep. Um, we basically put this in the tea. We're going to strain everything out. And so this is going to add also a little bit of nitrogen. There's not much in here. We'll go over quantities once we're mixing. So obviously most of us probably don't have access to sheep poop. It's totally fine. I used actually last year we didn't have the sheep yet. So last year I did not include this. Um, but... If you have bunnies, yard bunnies or, you know, bunnies that hop around the lawn and you can collect, I usually send my kids out with gloves on and have them collect a little bit of bunny poop and they earn some money for doing that. <laughs> oh, I'm that weird mom. But then you can use bunny, bunny poop, you can use alpaca pellets, goat pellets. I like to use things that are pelletized just because it's easier to work with. So that's why I included those four things because they're things that I have here around the farm other than the cinnamon sticks, which I don't grow cinnamon here, but easy to acquire. All right, let's make our tea. Chamomile has natural tannins in it, and those tannins are said to help with germination. So they can be a good thing to mist on your seeds as they are starting to germinate, just a chamomile tea. I just brew some chamomile tea and mist it over those seedlings, especially if you have things that are sometimes a little bit more difficult to germinate. Uh, apparently, I've never tried this myself, but right on the street is that the chamomile can help with germination a little bit. We have about two cups of stinging nettle, we have about one cup of chamomile flowers, and then we have two cinnamon sticks. You can up your cinnamon stick quantity if you want to. We're just starting with this much because we already have the antifungal qualities as well of the chamomile in there. If you're having a lot of algae issues, you might want to up your quantity of your cinnamon and steep it for a little bit longer. All 
right, we'll give it a stir. I'm gonna put the lid on and we're gonna let this steep overnight. Now I don't put any um, like mycorrhiza or anything like that into this because this water is hot. If we put mycorrhiza or compost into this at this point, it's gonna kill all the beneficial microbes and things in that compost, so that's why I don't add that in. Now there is a lot of flexibility when it comes to this recipe. Now after this has steeped overnight in the hot water and it's cooled down is when you're going to straighten it. So you can just use a um, a sieve, you can line that sieve with some cheesecloth or with some uh, like a nut bag, you can straighten it through that and then that way you won't have big chunks as you're trying to water it in. And this is particularly true if you're going to be applying it with a sprayer. So for example, if we're seeing algae you're dampening off and sometimes we'll want to apply it with a sprayer. This is my favorite sprayer. Um, you can see it's hand pumped which is great. It holds a pretty good volume and it also does this nice fine mist. So it's really good for seed starting because it doesn't blow the seedlings away. But it does uh, need to be filtered. So if you're going to be using a sprayer, just remember that if you have any chunks left in your seedling fertilizer that it could clog up your sprayer. So definitely make sure that you are straining it well. Once our seedling fertilizer is steeped overnight, we're going to dilute it as we water our seedlings with it. So 10 to 1 is going to be the range that you want to dilute this to. Um, and now if they're smaller seedlings, start with the higher dilution. And when you're just starting out using this fertilizer, start with the higher dilution. So start with 10 parts water to one part of the fertilizer. As the seedlings get a little bit more mature, they get a little bit bigger, then you can start decreasing the amount of dilution that you're doing with it. It is also a very flexible recipe, so just bear that in mind. If there's something in here that you don't have or you don't want to include, it is flexible. For example, if you are supplementing your plants with mycorrhiza, then maybe you don't want to use an antifungal in your seed starting. Now for me, I've experimented with using mycorrhiza in the past with my seedlings. I have now started to use it mostly in the month before I get ready to plant them out. So when they're just starting out and beginning, and depending on what it is, some things like our lisianthus are in the greenhouse growing for almost four months. So I have to kind of change what they need depending on how they're performing. So before we're getting ready to plant them out is when I'll usually start to use mycorrhiza with my seedlings in about the two weeks before, once they have good roots already establishing. And then in the beginning when they're still small and they're still growing and bulking up is when I will use something like this seedling fertilizer. So the other benefit of this is for things that are in soil blocks or in our seed trays for a long time. So for example, our lisianthus that tend to get green algae on them because they're in their trays for so very long. Uh, that's when a fertilizer like this one is going to come in handy with its antifungal properties instead of having to resort to any kind of fungicide. So I hope this is helpful for you guys. If you want to give it a try, please let me know how it goes. Uh, we did use this all year last year and we had great results with it. So I hope that it works as well for you as it does for me. I hope to see you back in the greenhouse soon. Happy gardening.